Hello friends, welcome back to All in Law. This is a medical video lecture, Microbiology. Microbiology. And today's topic of discussion is a very important bacteria, that is Neisseria meningitis. Okay, so before starting a discussion on this, I would request you to subscribe to our channel and please do subscribe. Please do share our videos with your friends. Guys, uh, this is a very important topic for USMLE Step 1 and for Step 2 CK also. So let's start a discussion on this, Neisseria meningitis. So what are the points that should strike to your mind whenever you think of Neisseria meningitis for USMLE examination? Remember, the most important thing that you should remember is about an adult man or a man presenting with the signs and symptoms of meningitis, meningitis with rash. There's a petechial rash. Then you should think of Neisseria meningitis, right? Meningitis, okay? Right, excellent. The other important thing for USML is step one and a step to CK examination is if they give the history of repeated Neisseria meningitis infection and they ask you what is the cause for his repeated Neisseria meningitis infection then what is that point that should strike your mind is deficiency in a late complement components that is from C5 to C8 very important points now the third important point that should strike your mind is they give the history of meningitis infection, meningitis infection and they ask you what's the prophylaxis for the close contacts and what's that drug? Rifampin. Okay. So these are the important points that should strike your mind whenever you think of this area meningitis infection. Now let's go on to the detail regarding the microbiology of the Neisseria meningitis. Neisseria meningitis. Let me brief you with the Neisseria. We have two important bacteria in this class. One is the Neisseria meningitis and Neisseria gonorrhea. In another video, I will discuss about Neisseria gonorrhea. So let's talk about the Neisseria meningitis. And before that, I would like to brief you with the Neisseria genus features. They are gram, gram negative remember they are gram negative diplococci 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 okay and the important is they are oxidase positive oxidase positive what is oxidase test cytochrome c oxidase test it's nothing but it's a flood colony with phenyl phenylene diamine in presence of oxidase and this turns into the black okay that's known as oxidase test or a rapid test okay right so these are the important features as we know this is a gram negative they are kidney shaped okay they are kidney shaped right and they have very important capsule okay capsule this is a capsule do you know why the bacteria have a capsule yes why? Tell me. Because they inhibit the phagocytosis. Phagocytosis. That's why. What's the important function of the capsule? Phagocytosis. They inhibit the phagocytosis. Remember. Okay? Thus, they cause the infection. Right? So now, the capsule, they have a large capsule that's made up of what you call. They have the latex particle agglutination. L P A. Latex particle agglutination. Okay. Right. Okay. Now, as you see, this can be done on a CSF. Okay. As it causes Neisseria meningitis. Okay. And what's the media that we use to grow this? Is a chocolate agar. Chocolate agar. Okay. Remember, in a 5% of carbon dioxide atmosphere, 5% of carbon dioxide, okay? 
and the other important reaction of this is it ferments a maltose whereas gonorrhea neisseria gonorrhea does not ferment the maltose this neisseria meningitis ferments the maltose okay so what's the reservoir for this what's the reservoir human nasopharynx nasopharynx okay how it is transmitted it's so transmitted by droplets respiratory droplets okay oropharyngeal colonization spreads to meninges via the bloodstream so meningitis is important to clinical feature of this uh, clinical condition by this caused by this nasal meningitis okay so let's talk about the pathogenesis how they got they cause a different virulence factors so as i said before the capsule the capsule is a polysaccharide so it's an antiphagocytic antigen okay it's an anti phagocytic so it inhibits the phagocytosis okay it's an antigenic okay there are five common zero groups and the b is what you call very common in the usa okay right and uh, remember now they have the other type the one is by capsule second is by iga protease iga protease how does it help nisseria meningitis to grow is by it allows the oropharynx colonization okay so it helps in that then we have what you call endotoxin lipopolysaccharide endotoxin okay this lipopolysaccharide causes of call causes the meningococcemia and the overproduction of outer membrane okay meningococcemia right and they have the pili and outer membrane proteins outer membrane proteins omps they are very helpful to colonize and invade and invade okay guys so right so you got an idea right what's that about meningococcemia meningitis or meningi meningococcal meningitis it's a gram negative diplococcus okay so try to remember about the history uh, about the these uh, microbiological features of what you call uh, nasal meningitis okay let's talk about the diseases as you know it causes meningitis and meningococcemia Uh, a man with a uh, meningitis plus petechial rash is really very important. Okay, if they give the petechial rash and the signs and symptoms of meningitis like abrupt onset of fever, chills, malaise, prostration, okay, and a rash, then think of nasal meningitis. There's some other disease that is known as a. It causes Waterhouse. Waterhouse. Frederick. Frederick. Frederick sin syndrome. What's that? You have a adrenal gland, right? This is this is a kidney. This is a kidney, and this is an adrenal gland over here. Adren adrenal gland. And the Waterhouse Peterson disease is in which there's inability of adrenals to produce, and it causes the injury by bleeding. It bleeds into the adrenals, and that bleeding is due to nasal meningitis. not only the nasal meningitis there are other causes also like other bacteria like streptococci like pseudomonas erygnosa okay so the different causes for that so they cause and bleed the adrenal and hence it results in the shock coma dic ecchymosis and death ultimately so that's a fulminant case right yep right so now let's talk about the diagnosis by gram stain of the csf csf finding is really very important gram stain culture very important and uh, latest agglutination okay right now let's talk about the treatment treatment how would you treat that it's a neonate or infant if it's a neonate or infant then we would like to treat with ampicillin and ciprofloxacin ampicillin and ciprofloxacin okay if it's a older infant children or child or children or adult so we use ciprofloxacin ciprofloxacin ceftriaxone with or without vancomycin
with or without vancomycin because we need to prevent this waterhouse Fredrickson's syndrome okay all right got it now what about the prevention how would you prevent that the capsule polysaccharide of the strains y w135 y w135 c and a okay these are the capsule polysaccharide strains of these okay now prophylaxis as i said for a close contact is a rifampin even you can use ciprofloxacin also okay guys i hope you got an idea about the insider meningitis meningitis thank you so much for watching this video take care